Okay, in this lesson, I'm going to talk to you about something called expectation. Right? So the expectation of a random variable, which is denoted uh, capital E of capital X, uh, so E of X, is the average value you'd expect to get if you repeated the event over and over and over again. Um, it's a really simple thing to, uh, to compute. Um, all you really have to do is, as I say here, multiply each value of the variable by the probability, add all those things up, and that final sum is the expectation. Right. So, for instance, if I were to ask you to find E of X, find the expected value, find the expected mean of a fair six-sided die, you know, to do this, we would multiply each value of the random variable by the probability of that thing. Right. So, so what are the values of this six-sided die? Well, you could get a one that happens one sixth of the time. You could get a two that happens one sixth. You could get a three that happens one sixth. You could get a 4, you could get a 5, or you could get a 6. Notice that with each of these, I'm just multiplying the, the value by the probability, value by probability. For each one of these, I'm just doing that, and then I'm adding all of them together. Right? So if you add all of these things together, I'll, I'll save us the computation, you'll end up with 21 over 6, which is 7 over 2, which is 3.5. And that answer should make sense. If you kept rolling a six-sided die over and over and over and over and over again, and you added up all the numbers you got and divided by how many times you did it, we would expect to have an average of 3.5. Now note, you can't actually roll a 3.5. It just means that on average, you should expect 3.5 each time. Okay? Um, I've got a couple examples of this, so let's, let's take a look at those. So a, a fair four-sided die is labeled with sides 0, 5, 9, and 10. Right. I want us to find the expected mean score if the die is thrown once. And I'm actually I'm going to throw one other thing in here. Um, I, I want to make sure that you guys remember how to write down um, a probability distribution. So pause the video for a second. Make sure that you know how to write down the probability distribution for this thing. Um, after that, check and make sure you got that right. And then compute this mean expected score using the same procedure we did on the last one. So your probability distribution on the top should have 0, 5, 9... And 10, and since it's a fair four set of die, each of these things happens, you know, one out of four times. And so the expectation, E of X, will simply be 0 times 1 fourth, 5 times a fourth, 9 times a fourth, and 10 times 1 fourth. That's going to end up being 24 times 1 fourth, which is 6. Great, so the expectation of our random variable is 6. If I were to repeat this thing over and over and over again and average together the results, 6 is what that thing would be. Okay. Um, let's move on to the next example. So in this problem, I'm showing you a new, like I'm actually showing you a new way to write a probability distribution. Um, and, and at first, this probably looks really frightening. Um, you know, there are two equal signs, like there's all kinds of scary stuff here, but, but bear with me for a minute. If you read this carefully, it really just says, the probability that the event y will be something in particular is this. And then they tell you the y values, you know, that you can use. It basically means you're going to plug in 0 for y, 1 for y, 2 for y, and 3 for y, right? So, for instance, if we wanted to know the probability that the event y was equal to 0, well, we would plug in 0 for y. k times 0 plus 1, well, that one is apparently k. Right. What about the probability that event y is 1? Well, we plug in 1 for y. That's k times 1 plus 1. So that one's apparently 2k. Right. If we continue that process, you know, plug in 0, plug in 1, plug in 2, and plug in 3, we should be able to write out the probability distribution. Right? We can put, you know, our variable y on the top. We can put the probability that y is equal to y on the bottom of our chart. We put 0. 1, 2, and 3 up here, okay? So, when I do that, right, well, I mean, so we know this is k, we know this is 2k. If you haven't already done so, like, pause the video, figure out what those last two are going to be, write those in. So you should have ended up with 3k and 4k. Part A asks us to write the probability distribution. This is the beginning of it, but we actually need to finish it. Right? The last thing we need to do is we need to figure out what k is. So that, again, I think is something that you guys should pause the video and do now. Right? Remember what you know about probability distributions and what you should do from here. Right? What we know is that these things should all add up to 1. 
k plus 2k plus 3k plus 4k all has to add up to 1. Well, that means that 10k is 1, which means k is 0.1. So if I were to go back and refine this thing, this probability is 0.1, this one's 0.2, this one's 0.3, and this one's 0.4. This is actually the answer to A. That is our probability distribution. Right? Part B asks, asks us to find the expected value of Y, asks us to find E of Y. Right? Now again, based on what we saw in the, in the previous example, you guys should be able to do this. So please pause the video. And, and compute the expected value of this event. Well, we know that we're just supposed to take the the value of, you know, of, of the, the, the actual value of the variable and multiply by the probability of that thing. So we do 0 times 0 0.1, we do 1 times 0 0.2, we do 2 times 0 0.3, and finally we do 3 times 0 0.4, and just add all those things up. Right? These are going to give me 0, plus 0.2, plus 0.6, plus 1.2. And if I add all those up, I end up with 2. So 2 is apparently my sort of average expected value of this distribution. And that, you know, that, that makes sense. It's a reasonable thing. You know, first of all, that number is within the range of values I have here. Second, if you look at these values, they tend to be weighted toward the high end. Right, three is most likely to happen. Zero, you know, hardly ever happens. So to get an expected and average value of two seems pretty reasonable. Okay. Um, the next example that I'm going to be going through is is a, a very basic word problem. Um, so please make sure that you understand this problem completely before you go on and take a look at that one. All right. So a casino introduces a new game. A payer pl a player pays one dollar uh, to roll a pair of dice, a fair dice. Um, if the two dice come up both six, the player wins ten dollars. If the two dice come up the same number, not six, so you know two ones, two twos, two threes, um, the player wins five dollars. And otherwise, the player loses and does not gain any money. Right? Part A is I want us to write out a probability distribution for a player's winnings in the game. Right? So and and I. You know, a part of the IB exam is us being able to understand these things, so let's dissect this, right? They want a probability distribution, which means we're going to have to make a chart, and it's a probability distribution for the player's winnings, right? So the first thing for you to identify here is what can the player win? Like, what can they potentially walk away with, right? I would argue there are three things that they can win in this game, right? What are the three things you can win? You can win nothing, which is hardly winning, but whatever. You, you can end up with zero. Your winnings can be zero. You can win $5, and you can win $10. And I guess maybe that's, that's the thing I want you guys to understand, right? We need to write a probability distribution, so we want to start with what we know. We want to write the winnings on the top. The next thing I need to do is I need to figure out what the probabilities of those three things are. And I wrote here that it may be useful for you to write a lattice diagram for that. Um... I, I would really recommend you guys pause the video right now and figure out what is the probability of winning nothing, what's the probability of winning $5, what's the probability of winning $10. So so pause and figure that out. Alright, so I'm I'm looking at that saying like, okay, well if I if I were to draw a lattice diagram, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I've mentioned before I'm I'm not actually gonna compute all of these things. All I really want to do is try to count, you know, the number of ways these things can happen. So, for instance, how many ways can you win $10, right? You will only win $10 down here, where you roll a 6 on both dice. That happens 1 out of 36 times, right? When will it happen that you win $5? Well, that happens at 1 and 1, 2 and 2, 3 and 3, 4 and 4, 5 and 5. Right? That's 5 out of 36. Now, when will you win nothing? It's everything else. And you could do it by counting or you could do it by subtracting. There are 36 total squares here. We've already counted 6 of them. That means there are 30 of them left. So I have 30 out of 36 for that one. And, like exciting, this is the answer for A. This is the probability distribution for a player's winnings. You will win nothing 30 out of 36 times. 
you will win $5 5 out of 36 times, and you will win $10 1 out of 36 times. Okay? Um, so part B, compute a player's expected winnings in the game. This should be very easy. Everybody should be pausing the video and, and doing this computation right now. So for question B, the player's winnings, we multiply. So, you know, we would do E of X because I called the event X up here. So E of X is 0 times 30 out of 36. It's not really necessary that you write that one down because it's 0, but I'm going to do it anyway. Plus 5 times 5 out of 36. Plus 10 times 1 out of 36. And if I add all those things together... I will end up getting the expectation to be, let's see here, this is 25 out of 36 plus 10 out of 36, which is 35 out of 36. That is the expectation of the winnings in this game. Right? Now question C, I don't know whether or not the IB exam is actually going to ask a question like C, but I, but I still think it's a great question for us to think about. Is this a good game for a casino to offer to its players? Right? Like, think about that for a second. Think about what a casino's job is. And think about whether or not this is a good game for them. In this game, a player pays $1 to play. And on average, how much do they win? On average, they win 35 36 of a dollar. Which is almost $1. Right? A casino, in some sense, should love this game. Because it means that players are slowly losing, right? If a player plays, you know, 36 times, we should expect them to win. Like, if, and actually think about this fraction. If a player pays, plays 36 times, we should expect them to win $35. That's great. That means that if they play 36 times, a casino wins $1 in the long run. Which, on the one hand, is not enough money, so maybe a casino wouldn't like it because they won't make money fast enough. On the other hand, players feel like, hey, this is a good deal. I might hit the jackpot. I might win the 10 Heck, I can win the $5 this often. The idea is, because of this figure, the casino is coming out ahead. And that's what they're looking for. That's what they want. So I think if the IB exam asked this question, you would answer, yes, it's a good game because the casino wins in the long run. Is it a good game for a player to play? No, unless you really, really like rolling dice and hoping that you win. Um, so that's the end of this one. That's the end of my my, my take on, on expected value. Um, this question of winnings is, is a fairly common question on the exam, so it's, it's good that we understand.